Hey guys, welcome back to Smells Like Teen Angst. And today we are talking about season three, part one of Bridgerton. Let's get into it. Now, let me set this up. This is going to be a very spoilery discussion. If you have not watched this, please table it and then come back and discuss it with me because I can't tell you about how much I love this without spoiling some things for you. You have been warned. Okay guys, let's get into it. As you may see, I have appeared to you out of my typical diamond of the season virginal drag. And you wanna know why? Because we're giving experience this season, honey. We're giving spice. We are giving gloves off. Everybody is getting it. And it's great. Shonda heard us and she was like, I'm sorry about this COVID season, but I'ma fix it. And she fixed it. Ooh, she fixed it. <laughs> so let me give you just a little bit of setup about what is happening this season and all the different storylines that we may be getting this season. As we've been teased and we've been told, this is the pollen season. This season, although it's sexier, is definitely a brand new trope. This is Penelope, this is Colin, this is definitely friends to lovers. And it's good. It's very clear the path that they're taking. You can see how they get there. And if you think back to the previous seasons we've seen, this setup has been happening for forever, which now I'm wondering, what else are you sneaking past me, Shonda? What am I not noticing? We are skipping over Benedict. Benedict is one of my favorite stories, but Benedict, because we are pushing him off again, he continues to have these really terrible sexual storylines, which I mean, to each his own. I'm glad baby's a little kinky. I appreciate that he gets out there, but there's no substance to this man yet. And when you read his book, he is a thinker. He's a Renaissance man. He's an artist. I'm gonna need just a little bit more of who Benedict is before we get into a season with him. Another character that we thought we would miss, but again, we're moving on to new things, is Daphne. She is not in this season. We still have Anthony and Kate, and we get a really big announcement from them, and we get some little spicy scenes between them. And it's good to see them post honeymoon, post marital bliss, kind of just falling into their new titles as Viscount and Viscountess of the Bridgerton family. Another new device that doesn't really take place in the books that we're experiencing this season is Eloise befriending Cressida. If you read the books, Cressida is very much a villain. The girl's not nice. There's no redeeming quality about her. And as sad as it is because I don't like women to hate women, it's really weird for me to see Cressida being human. Some things that are really bugging me this season so far, but I'm really hoping can kind of just like come to their summit is Penelope and Eloise not being friends. In the book, this never happens. And Penelope keeps her secret until she doesn't. Colin is the person who discovers it. In the series, Eloise is the first person to uncover it, which understandable, a best friend should probably know. But the fact that it's created this giant divide between them and forced Eloise to kind of be friends with a character that if you come from the book universe, really don't respect, it's just sad. I keep hoping that at one point they are going to just squash their beef and come back together because I need them to unite. The banter is just too good between the two of them. And it, it's boring seeing Eloise's character 
wasted on daft girls because she's just too intelligent for that. Something wrong. Seems as though every Bridgerton was born to attract notice. For some of us, notice is very slight. Some other new yet interweaving stories from the book universe to the show is that we are getting a backstory to Francesca in the opening of this season. We're being reintroduced to Francesca. She's set to debut and she's looking for a husband. She is in this man market. We're meeting John Sterling, which when you read Francesca's books, he's long gone. So getting to see this whole setup to romance for her and how she gets there is awesome. And I can't wait to see how this is going to build yet explore when we get to a Francesca season. And at the same time, Colin Bridgerton has returned yet again from his travels. And let me tell you, daddy is looking pretty sturdy. He's definitely filled out. The Bridgerton glow up has happened and everyone in the town is on him. Is that our brother? Colin. Brother. Under what foreign sun did you apparently get so sturdy? <laughs> now, of course, after the fallout from last season, some new storylines definitely had to be invented to get these two back together. And I really like the blossoming that is happening for Penelope. It comes off of a rise where she's decided, I want to stand out. I do not want to die alone with my mother. That sounds miserable. I want a husband. But having been a wallflower for the majority of her life, this being her third season, she enlists help in her bestie, Colin Bridgerton. This device of putting them together that is not originally from the books is honestly such a cute way to kind of get us wrapped up in their chemistry together and help develop that connection. It's heartfelt because we've spent this time getting this chemistry between Penelope and Colin that originally took us four books to get. Two of the most important things that happen from the book to the show in this season is we do get the kiss between Colin and Penelope and we do get the carriage ride. Does this happen the way it happened in the book? Absolutely not. As we've said, the TV show takes inspiration from the books and definitely runs with it in its own way. But it is just as steamy, just as sweet, and of course we are getting everything that we were promised in the book. And that is a proposal, which in my opinion is so much better than the proposal in the book. It's earnest, it's sweet, it's not rude. Which, in my opinion, the Bridgerton men come off a little rude in the books. The girls kind of deal with it because they have no experience with men and that's just, you know, Regency romance in general. But I like that there's some ownership of who people are in the television show and who the women are and how they traverse the world without being disrespected. And I thank you, Shonda, for adding storylines that don't disrespect the women or the characters that they are. Now, as far as hype goes, we've heard the stories of Penelope and Colin breaking furniture and going too long in the carriage scene and mirrors and all these things that are, have just been teased to us. And we're all wondering, does it live up to the hype? And I can tell you, it does. It specifically does. We could not have asked for more. And we're still getting four more episodes. I mean, maybe the rating might get bumped up to NC-17. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's giving spice and it's giving love and it's giving romance and it is giving Bridgerton. And I'm so excited for part two. And I'm so excited to see what you guys think of this. Penelope. Is it our minds or our hearts? Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to hear what you think of part one. I cannot wait to see part two. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your predictions. Let me know what you think. And I will see you guys on part two.